Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Lucas, and if you've been here before, you will know that, unfortunately, I don't have anybody sitting next to me today. Abdul had some business to attend to, so it's just me today, and uh, we'll be going over audio actions that you add to all of your audio clips, and the video motion, which is different than a video action, which I'll get into a little bit later, and the video motion stuff that we have built into ScreenFlow 6. So, starting after this quick little break, we will jump right into some really awesome demos. I'll be answering questions, and it's going to be a great show. So, I'll see you guys in a second. And we're back. Um, once again, no Abdul. You guys saw that awesome new intro that, that features Abdul, but unfortunately he's not here today. But uh, I think I think we got some really good stuff going on uh, today. I have a lot of stuff to show you, so it's possible we'll run a little bit long. I'm going to try and keep it uh, as short and, and precise as I can, but uh, we'll see how long it takes. But the one thing I really want to make sure is that I can see comments from people and I'm not sure I can see them right now. Um, so if anybody's out there watching and you have Comments any questions, you. you can go ahead and just, oh, be quiet. You can go ahead and just put them in. Here we go. Now I can see some comments. Perfect. So let's jump right in. Uh, if you could switch over to my desktop here, you can see I have a ScreenFlow project, but uh, I think that's the video motions. We're going to do that second. The first thing we're going to do is audio. And in order to do that, I've got this handy dandy mic here, and I'm going to record a quick audio snippet so that we can go in and adjust it with all of the awesome stuff that ScreenFlow can do. So let's get the desktop, record audio from my blue USB right here, and let's do a quick audio recording. Hi everyone, this is Lucas. We're doing an audio recording for use in a demo to show you how awesome video, just kidding, audio actions are in ScreenFlow. Perfect. Let's open up a new document. And here you go. You can see that I have, of course, the screen recording because I was uh, recording the screen. And then my audio clip. And let's play this back. I just want to make sure you guys can hear this. Hi everyone, this is Lucas. We're doing an audio recording for use in a demo to show you how awesome video, just kidding, audio actions are in ScreenFlow. Perfect. I'm going to get rid of that last little bit just by highlighting both, clicking the T button on my uh, keyboard, highlighting the part that I just trimmed off and deleting it. And so now we've got what looks to be eh, a little bit longer than 11 seconds of audio and I can now add audio actions. So up here in the top right, this is my properties bar, and we've gone over a couple of these already. We've gone over most of them, actually. We're doing this one today, and is it this one? Yes, these two today, the audio actions and video motions. But as you can see, if I'm, if I'm here on my screen recording, my audio action tab is completely unusable. I can open this, but even there, it's all grayed out. That's because there's no audio quality in this screen recording. There's no, if I move this out of the way and just play it, you're not going to see, well, you're not going to hear anything, let alone really see anything. But while I'm over here, an audio recording. that's where all the audio is. And when I click this, suddenly my audio actions properties window, completely functional at this point. All right, looks like I can see Mark Richmond joined. Hi, Mark. Um, and let's see, we're also streaming on YouTube. Looks like there's a couple people over on the YouTube side as well. And if I chat in here, sorry guys, this is the first time I've used YouTube chat, so I just want to make sure to see how it goes. Hello. If you guys are watching on YouTube, you could probably see that I just sent out a message there. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So, 
back in ScreenFlow. Let's pull the screen recording back in just so we have something that we're looking at here. When I have this selected, my audio actions are now live. And just like when we did a video actions a couple episodes ago, all I have to do is click that action button and it will create an audio action in my audio file that I can now adjust. Karen Feldman McCann. Hi, Karen. How you doing? <laughs> Everyone, that's my mother-in-law. Say hello. <laughs> awesome. Um, and, and the most basic way to use an audio action, what I do pretty much every single time, let's zoom in here just a little bit so you can see, is I like to use it as a fade out. Um, if you remember from the, the first iteration of this, how we have essentially two keyframes at the beginning of my action, at the end of my action, and that's a beginning state and then an end state. And then the distance between is how long it's going to take to create the difference between my beginning state and my end state. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing, but I'm gonna show you here exactly what that means. So, right here we're on volume 100%. And over here at the end of my action, we're on volume 100%. But what I can do is drop that all the way down to zero. And you can see as I do that, if I make this a little bit bigger, oops, got my mouse stuck. What's going on here? How come I can't? We have this massive extra big mouse so you guys can see what's going on in my ability to click the right button. Oh, I got it. <laughs> oh, no, I made it small again. There we go. So now I've got it nice and big. And you can see the audio waveform in here. And when I'm in this audio at the end of the last keyframe, the end state, as I drop it down, look at the audio waveform after the audio thing. It's gone completely. If I move it back up, it's here. Move it back down, it's gone. Because now, after this point right there, my audio is off. So if we listen to it real fast, you can see that. How oh, awesome. Video. Just kidding. And it just fades out. And we can make that fade a lot longer if we want by just lengthening the amount of the audio action. Demo to show you how awesome video. Just kidding. And it goes out. And if we want it to be earlier, now we have this video action that has 100% volume at the beginning, 0% at the end, and we can move it wherever we want. So if we want the fade out to be really quick and towards the beginning. This is Lucas. We're off just like that if we want it to be really long and take up the end of the clip we just make it longer and put it over here video just kidding audio actions are in screen and that's going to fade nicely out one thing to 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 keep in mind this isn't going to change anything but it gives you an idea about how these actions actually work over here if you look up here in the top right hand corner it says 100 percent the volume of my selected clip Watch as we play through a very long fade out. Watch the percentage over here change as it goes through. So, right here, it's at 100%. For use in a demo to and now it's going to start awesome dropping. Video, just kidding. Audio actions are in screen. There you go. So, that's the most basic way of using an audio action to change from 100% to zero to give a little fade out. Now we can, we can reverse that. I'm gonna delete this clip, or this audio action. Make sure it's at 100%. We can reverse that as well. And if we add another audio action, and this time make sure that the end state of my audio action is at 100%, and my beginning state, if we drop that down to zero, now we have a fade in. Hi everyone, this is... So if we do it here so you can see it a little bit better. Lucas, we're doing an audio recording for you. So it slowly gets louder, and once again, you can see over here in the top right corner, Hi everyone, this is Lucas. it'll slowly rise up for to 100. And this, you can also add curve types, but I found that curve types on audio actions are not nearly as powerful as cur curve types on video actions because you can really see the change in the curve type with a video action, but it's hard to really distinguish a uh, audio action curve type. Let, let's delete this. We'll put a, make sure this is 100 again. We'll put a new audio action and we'll do a fade out. And we'll put it here at the end and we'll make it a little bit long. In a demo and this is a 
If we check our curve type, this is linear. It's just going to go right through a constant rate of fade out. Let's listen. Audio actions are in screen flow. Now if I add an ease in, ease out curve type on my audio action, we might not even really hear much of a difference. Video, just kidding. Audio actions are in screen flow. Maybe it was just a little bit more pronounced, but if you want it to be more pronounced, you can just shorten it. I wouldn't recommend spending too much time adjusting the curve type of your audio actions um, unless you're really into it. I, I just don't think it, it's worth the effort to put into it in order to get a uh, something out of it. So Gary Neville, hi from Facebook in Wisconsin. Hello. Howdy. George from Houston. Awesome. we got people from all over the country. This is awesome. Uh, thanks for coming to say hello. Uh, let me know if I'm if I'm talking about something that, or if I miss something, or you don't quite like what I'm talking about. Let me know. I can react. Um, but that was just the the adding of an audio action. In general, that's what I use it for. I've never really used audio actions for other things outside of fading in and out my audio when it comes to audio actions. But let's go through the rest of this list here because there's a lot going on. Mute audio. It's one of the more straightforward things. When I click it, you can't hear it anymore. And when I unclick it, audio. Just kidding. you can hear it. It's very straightforward. If you want to mute, mute the audio, sometimes what I'll do is, one of the reasons why you want might want to do that is, let's say you have a very long track of, actually just recently I was recording a voiceover, and I had a stuffy nose. And I kept like sniffing or uh, coughing a little bit and I wanted to get it out of there. But deleting a section of my audio was going to make it more difficult to adjust uh, all of my audio clips at once. So what I was able to do is I can just come in here, clip out a certain piece of my audio and mute that. Lucas, we're doing an audio recording for you. You how awesome. And now... What I can do is I can just grab everything and move it all in one piece, and I'm not going to worry about if I had deleted that. Maybe I just grabbed that and ruined all of my timing. So one of the reasons why you might use a mute clip as opposed to just deleting that section is it'll keep all of your pieces of, uh, of content together in one group. It's a lot easier to deal with. Um, let me check over here. Uh, Mr. Orthopedia says stand up paddle boarding. That's pretty cool. I like that too. Uh, Scott Rogers, can we import still images on one layer yet? Scott Rogers, you're going to have to, you're going to have to explain that to me because I mean, in general, when we have a piece of media, let's use Halloween clip art. We just pull it in and it just goes on one layer. So I'm not really sure what you mean by that question. He said, can we import still images on one layer? And yeah, you can. That's just pull in, a, pull in an image and it works. So I'm not quite sure what you mean by that question. All right, let's get back to audio here. Ducking. Ducking is a really interesting thing. It's going to be a little hard for me to show you right now. Um, just because... You need like a piece of music behind a voiceover. That would be an instance where you would use ducking. What ducking means, and I think if I hover over it, it'll tell you. Yeah, ducking will cause the volume of other active audio clips in the timeline to reduce when sound is detected in the selected clip. So what that means, that, that's a little technical, but what that means is that, let's say I have music in the background and a sporadic voiceover, and I add ducking to my sporadic voiceover. Anytime the voice comes in, ScreenFlow is automatically going to lower the background volume of that music in order to make the voiceover shine through a little bit. And so what you're going to get is kind of a louder and then quieter and then louder and then quieter, and you don't have to make those actions uh, in the timeline. ScreenFlow will do it for you. It's... Um, if you have really long projects with lots of audio, it might be good to use. But in general, I like to just personally change 
things, I feel like I have a little bit more control over the audio when I'm making the adjustments. But ducking is really good if you want to um, not spend the time on it. All right. Uh, smoothing the volume levels. So this is, uh, when I first started working here, we didn't have this option, and it's actually pretty cool. It's going to normalize and smooth the volume, producing a clip with a uniform waveform and volume. What that means is that if you have a, let's actually see if we can, we can do an actual uh, test of this. So I'm going to do another recording to show you what's going to happen here. And I'm going to start really quiet and then I'm going to like do a, a, a popping sound into the microphone or maybe get a little bit louder to get lots of different types of audio range. So here we go. This is a test of very quiet sound. Pa, 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 psh, psh, and loud sound. Okay, I know that was really strange. I'm sorry. But uh, I just thought I'd check it out. Because what I wanted was what you see here. Which is... Um, by the way, if that ever gets in your way, there's some handy buttons down here in the bottom corner. I'm, I'm kind of in the way. Let me just move it over a little bit. Um, there's a button right here in the middle. There's magnet. There's this little icon looking thing and then the waveform button. If you really want to see what's behind this, you can click this button and it'll get rid of that thumbnail. And then you can see the whole, uh, the whole screen or the whole audio waveform of your audio clip. It's just a nice little trick. So if we listen to this back real fast. This is a test of very quiet sound. Pa, 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 psh, psh, and loud sound. So you can see here how my levels are crazy. I have little tiny levels here, and then over here I'm starting to get those little red marks. That means I'm clipping the audio and it's starting to distort. Um, and then I got loud over here. So let's see what happens when I choose pro audio processing and I want to smooth the audio levels, smooth the volume levels. So you can see how that changed a little bit. Watch. Especially keep your eye over here on the left-hand side of the clip, the beginning of the clip, when I was being a little bit more quiet. It's going to boost that up and make these ones a little bit smaller to make everything more uniform. So let's listen to it now. This is a test of very quiet sound. Pa, 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 psh, psh, and loud sound. So what that does is it's made that quiet part at the beginning a little bit louder so that the stuff that was louder at the end is no longer such a big difference. Um, if you're sitting here and you're in a controlled environment and you've got your microphone with a pop filter on it and you're going and you're just doing a voiceover, you're not going to need to use the smoothing of audio levels. It's just not a necessary thing because you're probably going to have very uniform sound. But let's say you're outside and you're doing like a, a natural recording and you're you're hearing like cars honk in the back and you're hearing people yell and then some people are being too quiet. If you use that smoothing of audio levels, volume levels, it's going to make your clips a lot more uniform. Oops. Audio mix. If you are bringing in multiple channels of audio, you can see that here. Watch my mix output and my audio mix when I play through this original clip. Hi everyone, this is Lucas. We're doing an audio recording for use in a demo to show you how awesome video just... You can see how here in the mix output and my audio mix, I have pretty uniform levels on both the first and second channels. Um, what I can do now is I can solo these. So it's hard to explain here because I, I don't have multiple audio tracks coming in from either side. It's, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's just a duplication of them. But this S button, when I click on that, Hi everyone, this is Luke. you can see that the second channel doesn't play any audio. This allows me to solo that track, it's called. And what that means is I can listen only to that first channel of audio. So if I had... Uh, you know, maybe I was recording some music and I had multiple speakers and I had my, my violins on the right-hand side and my flutes on the left-hand side and they were coming in in two channels. I could solo just the flutes or solo just the violins to hear how they sound and adjust accordingly the audio to make them sound better. What's going on here? Stop that. Um, 
So if I do, like, for example, let me take off the soloing. I'll drop my channel 1 to 28 and my channel 2 to 125. When I play this back, Hi everyone, this is Lucas. We're doing an audio recording. you can see that there's now a discrepancy in the output of each one of those channels. I'm going to switch this back to 100. And this one to 100 as well. And that's the audio mix. So if you are working with multiple audio channels, this is where you can have a little bit of control over each one of them. I've seen a couple questions here. Let me just uh, read them real quick. Uh, George Pinto says, can you talk about audio filters? Yes, I'll get to those in a minute. ScreenFlow sees my audio plugins and shows the parameters, but the audio is not if affected. Interesting. Um, and what is the fastest way to export audio for processing in a Dons and bring back? I don't, I don't know what D-A-W-S-N-D bring back is. I'm sorry, D-A-W. I'm not sure what that is. Um, is there a built-in EQ that's a problem because screen monitor is half and the individual channels? George Pinto, I'm sorry, I didn't, I don't understand a couple of those questions. I apologize for that. Oh man, there's a lot of people over here too. Oh, Scott Rogers, when you Oh, I see. You want to pull in a whole bunch. I see what you mean, Scott Rogers. Uh, yeah, if I pull in multiple, it's going to put them on top of each other instead of side by side. No, it's not something you can do. That's just how it is designed at the moment. Um, that could be a feature request, but I've actually not heard it specifically, uh, that question, but... I can bring that to engineers and see how they think about it. Mr. Orthopedia, the next version of ScreenFlow will not let you stream live because we make other products for that. If you're streaming gaming, we make uh, Game Show. And if you're streaming anything else, we make Wirecast. And uh, yeah, like ScreenFlow Tube just told you there, we make other products specifically for streaming. So ScreenFlow is, is likely not going to be doing that. But it does work well as an uh, add-on for other products that we make. All right, let's get back into this. Let's continue here. Effects. These are fun. Um, the, the majority of content that I create doesn't need an effect, but it's fun to listen to. So I'm just going to go through a couple real fast and show you. First, you want to add the effect. And then I like uh, Cathedral is pretty good. Let's boost it way up. And now listen. Hi, everyone. This is Lucas. We're doing an audio recording for use in a demo to show you how awesome video, just kidding, audio actions are in ScreenFlow. Oh yeah. That's the cathedral. You can do a small room. What about a small room? Hi everyone, this is Lucas. We're doing an audio recording for use in a demo to show... And then we can do maybe a medium chamber. <laughs> Hi everyone, this is Lucas. We're doing an audio recording for use in a demo to show you how awesome video, just kidding, audio... So you have a couple different ways of essentially adding reverb. Reverb, excuse me. Um, it can be used for you know funny effects like that. That cathedral one sounds almost creepy if you do that. Hi everyone, this is Lucas. We're doing an audio. You can make some funny noises with that, or if you just kind of want to add something extra special to your audio, if you feel like it's getting, uh, if it's getting just kind of blended in with everything else, this this can add a little bit of punch to your audio. And that's here in the cathe or in the effects area. Removing the background noise. This is also really awesome. Um, if you are in a loud uh, loud environment and you're trying to record audio, I have not re I have not removed the background noise here. Let's listen. Hi everyone, this is Lucas. We're doing an audio recording for use in a demo to show you how awesome video, just kidding, audio actions are. So I don't have a ton of background noise in here, but I'm going to show it to you anyways because you can hear the effect that it will make. So when I first turn it on, I recommend 100% is going to make it sound weird. Listen to this. Hi, everyone. This is Lucas. We're doing an audio recording for use in a demo to show you how awesome video just kidding. It sounds really constrained. If I take off that uh, the background noise filter, you can hear it again. Hi everyone, this is Lucas. We're doing an audio recording. 
That's full-throated, loud, well-enunciated. This is with 100%. Hi, everyone. This is Lucas. We're doing an audio recording for use in a demo to show you... You can feel how my voice sounds a little bit tight, a little bit cut around the edges. Um, so I think that generally when I use the background filter, I don't like to have it at 100% because I feel like it changes my voice too much. I'm going to drop it down to around 30% C. Hi, everyone. This is Lucas. We're doing an audio recording for use in a demo. So that's going to sound a lot better, and if there was audio behind it, it can get, uh, it will take care of a lot of it. So that's what the, uh, oops, wrong button. That's what the remove background noise is. Just remember, if you push it to 100%, you're going to get kind of a weird modulation of your voice. So I wouldn't recommend that. Now, audio filters, and, and George, you said something about this. Um, these are taken from we don't make these these are not screen flow audio filters these are apple audio filters these are built into your mac and we just hook into it and pull them in so you can use these if you want i find them to be very very complicated and difficult to use if you don't know what you're doing like what does the au low pass mean i can change my cutoff frequency and resonance but i don't really know what that means so if i add Let's change my cutoff frequency in my resonance. Lucas, we're doing an audio recording for use in a demo to show you how awesome video, just kidding, audio actions are in screen. Use in a demo to show you how awesome. So you can really go in and adjust your audio. And there are a ton in here. And I personally don't know how to use them all. Um, but there is one that I use on a regular basis. And that's in the Dynamics processor. So it's generally the second one there, AU Dynamics processor. When I add that, it gives me a ton of different things to do here. Compression threshold, the headroom, expansion ratio, blah, 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 release time. Down here at the bottom is the master gain. And this is one of the easiest ways to adjust your audio levels without going too far. So right here, you know, maybe this isn't loud enough for me. What I want to do is come in and change my master gain. And as you can see, oh, that's going to be way too loud. I'm not even going to play that back. But what that does is that'll boost the audio of an entire clip. And one of the reasons why I like using that is because just the way that this particular microphone, I'm not actually using that right now. I'm using this little headset microphone. But when I record videos, I use one of these blue microphones. Um, what it what it allows me to do is I don't have to boost the gain on this because when I boost the gain on this microphone, I get a lot of clipping and distortion of my audio. But what that means is that when ScreenFlow records it, it doesn't come in very strong. So I can come in here and add this Dynamics Processor filter to my audio clip, boost the master gain, and suddenly all of my audio is that much more powerful without the distortion at the top. Um, you do have to be careful because you can distort it if you go too high on these on these filters, but um, they are very, very helpful. And George Pinto says, low pass removes frequencies 20,000 back to zero. And so that's, that's technically what it does. But I got to say, George, that still doesn't mean much to me because I'm not an audiophile and I don't spend a lot of time with audio. And so understanding what would happen if I remove frequencies 20,000 back to zero, I don't even know what that means even though you told me what it does. So that's why these things can be really complicated. And if you never touch these, you're going to be fine. If you want to take some time and learn about how to adjust your audio, these are very powerful tools, and you can do all sorts of awesome stuff with them. That's generally the audio actions tab. Uh, we've got our volume adjustment. I guess I never actually told you about that, but that's pretty straightforward. We've got our audio muting, our video or audio actions we can add. Ducking, which is when you have multiple things and you want to lower it in the background automatically and then bring it back up when another piece of audio is not playing. We can smooth our audio levels to make sure that quiet parts and loud parts become much more equal. Uh, we can adjust our audio mix if we have multiple channels of audio. We can add effects and adjust the amount of those effects. We're going to remove the background noise. Remember, I wouldn't recommend pushing it up to 100%. I'd pull it back just a little bit. 
And then audio filters. Those can get really complicated. They can change your audio drastically. And if you know how to use them, jump in and do it. If you don't, maybe spend a little time or just use one of the simple ones like in the Dynamics processor and add a, uh, a gain adjustment. But other than that, this is where you're going to do all of your stuff. And in, in general, you don't have to adjust your audio too much in my experience making videos. So I'm going to check a couple questions here and then we're going to move on to a second section of the show today. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I got to say, George, it's very likely that you know more than I do when it comes to audio and asking me a question about it might not be the best person to do it. Um, because just based on the, the questions that you've asked and the and the uh, the feedback that you've given, you sound like you know what you're talking about. Is there a way to find the audio file in a folder somewhere, or do you always have to export audio? Um, I would recommend exporting the audio, and the best way to do that is by going up to export. Oh man, those kind of questions are why it's great when Abdul is here. I feel real bad that he couldn't be here today. He is my my. He is always going to be my uh, co-host, but he just unfortunately had an emergency. But because he works in support, he knows how to go into the deep back end of program and figure out all this kind of stuff. But when I come here, what I want to do is customize my uh, thing and then just turn off the video. And that way I can just export audio and that can be really helpful. Um, so in general, that's the best way to do it, go out there. Because I don't think that you can find individual clips anywhere else in the system. So what I would do is come back here, go to the beginning of the audio clip that I want, select I on my keyboard, that's the mark an in point, go to the end if it's not the end, and select O, and te uh, press O on your keyboard, that's an out point. And now as you can see, I've got my in and my out point set come up here to export selected range that will change once you have the IO set here. Come customize, turn off the video, adjust my audio and say audio test MP4 and you can see as I export it, it'll take no time at all because it's an audio file. It's here on my desktop. This is a test of very quiet sound. We don't need to listen to me making a fool of myself there, but uh, that's the best way, in my opinion, to to have access to individual audio files. Let me jump over and check out the comments here. Scott Rogers, you did put in a feature request. Okay, good. I'm glad that they have visibility. Just remember, a feature request does not mean immediate feature change. We need to, you know, try and see all the things that people want and adjust things to make them easier to use. And I, I totally understand the frustration there, Scott. Ooh, and Gary says YouTube is just way better than Facebook in the end. Awesome. All right. So let's move on from audio. I'm gonna I'm gonna just minimize this. And we are now going to jump into um let me move that real fast. We're going to jump into the video motion section. And I did a webinar on this a couple months ago. I don't remember exactly when it was, but I made this little handy dandy doily GIF. Let's watch it real fast. Oh, let's, let's, let's actually export this as a GIF real fast. Oh, I'm in the nested clip area. Hang on a second. Let's jump back out here to the timeline. Export. We come here to animated GIF. Let's do 100% because why not? Motion bird GIF. Export. So we're just going to export this because I just want to show you what it looks like. Um, by the way, if you do use the GIF export in ScreenFlow, one of the best ways to test it if you just grab it, and I'll show you here in a second when it's done, but if you just grab the thumbnail and drag it into an open browser, Chrome, Safari, Firefox, whatever it is, it would, uh... oh, look at that, Joey. It will automatically play in your browser. I'm sorry, I got confused by a question over here. So I'll show you here in a second. I've got Chrome open. Actually, let's open Safari because I'm using Chrome for something else.
All right, and now I can take this GIF, which I just exported, throw it up here, and it's just going to play in my browser. There you go. So I made this using ScreenFlow and using the motion callouts, the motion actions, the motion, I'm, I'm losing my mind, video motion. There we go. Make this a little bit smaller. And Joe Yi said, who works here, she works on ScreenFlow, she said, you would have to export the audio to get the file. Video and audio are both included in the SCC recording file. Um, so let's see if we... Let's see what we can find when we investigate here a little bit. Let's open up Finder. Let's find all of my files. Let's look for some ScreenFlow files here. Oh, LMNOP. I don't remember how my alphabet works. And let's show package contents. Media, ScreenFlow documents, thumbnails. SF logo PNG. Hmm, I wonder if that's the way to do it. Uh, I know that I have audio in some of these, so. Let's go back. Sorry, guys, this is a bit of a tangent, but it's also helping me learn a little bit, too. So we're going to do audio test, and we're going to send it to the desktop. And I know that in this document, there are audio files. So if I go to audio text and I show the package contents, I've got my ScreenFlow document, my thumbnail, my uh, P list in the media folder. Uh, yeah, I've got SCC files and they're screen recording. So you can't actually access those individual audio files, George. You are going to have to export them. All right, so back into video motion. Sorry, I got off on a little tangent there, um, but I think it was interesting, interesting information. So let's watch this real fast one more time, and then I'm going to show you what I did here. Let's go over to my media library, and this first part where the ScreenFlow logo breaks up, that's because I have each individual piece here. These are all individual pieces of the ScreenFlow logo and I was able to just break them out. And there, I only just used video actions. In the past, we had a, a ScreenFlow Live about video actions, video snapbacks, we talked about all that stuff. If we just look at this part, you can see that's all that's going on. But then in this next one, you can see instead of, let's see if I can figure out how to press these buttons again, there we go. So here, this is not a video action, this says, pulse and this one says gravity because they're not video actions here in the other ones this says video or video snapback that's because over here in this third thing the little kind of clock with the dotted circle around it this is my video motion area and I can add to any sort of clip a video motion action this one is gravity so you can see it bounces that's what it added there. And then the pulse does zoo, like that. So when I put them all together, I get a really cool little effect. So let's open up a new project, and we're going to go through all the different types of video motion, and you can see how they affect individual elements. So I'm going to open up a new ScreenFlow document. We'll do 1920 by 1080. Perfect. And let's just pull in a random image that we can find here. Uh, there we go. I like my Halloween kit. And it's a nice PNG. We're going to throw that right in the middle and we're going to give it a 10 second duration. Perfect. So as you can see, there's there's nothing there. Nothing is happening to it. It's just sitting there. But if I come over and start adding video motion actions, you can see here, I now have my video motion. I choose an effect. And once I do that, you can see that the, the, little, the little icon here, it says video. When I choose effect, it'll change to whatever I have here. And we have three options, gravity, spring, and pulse. And you can see as I go between them, they have different parameters. So gravity has elasticity, strength, velocity, and squash. 
Spring will have damping mass stiffness and a way to apply it. And then pulse will have pulse count frequency amplitude. So let's start with gravity. Lock to zero second effect duration. Nope, we don't want to do that. We want to change our direct duration. Let's make it for six of the 10 seconds and we want it to start at second two. So I line up the beginning of my video action with the seconds, with the second second. And now it's gonna end at eight seconds because we have six seconds and we want to lock it to six seconds. So what that means is that as we adjust these things, it will not adjust the length of it. If we don't lock to our duration, as we change our strength and our velocity in squash, well, it doesn't seem to be happening here, but in other, th in other, yeah, if we want to, let's lock to 1.4 seconds. If we take it off, uh, oh yeah, it's telling us right here how long it's going to take. 2.3 seconds. Now it's 1.4. Now it's 5.7. So in order to create the entire action that we've created, it will take 5.7 seconds but we're only allowing it to happen for 1.4. I got a little confused there, so I didn't want to confuse you guys. Let's, let's try this again. We want it to last for six seconds. From two seconds to eight seconds, that's how long it's going to be. Um, this number here shows us how long the effect that we've created will last. So even though we have our video action going for six seconds, our parameters here have only enabled a 0.9 second effect duration. So if we change this, we change the elasticity and the strength down and the velocity up, now we can change it to exactly six seconds. So now we know that this, these parameters are gonna last that long. So let's just preview it. Let's see what happens. So in those six seconds, it bounced up in the air and bounced down and just like that. If we want to change the elasticity, well, first of all, it's going to change the length of it, but let's see what else it changes. Ooh, okay. So my elasticity is down so much, it no longer bounces. When I bounce it up to 100%, watch how high it bounces off the first bounce. Woo, almost back up to the top. I drop it way down, that first bounce doesn't go very far. It's like it, it's like it weighs more or gravity is more powerful. But let's give it a, uh, let's give it a 67% elasticity just to have some nice bounce, maybe even more so we can get some good bounces going. And then we can change the strength. What does a change in strength do? Okay. The higher the strength, it looks like the more difficult it is for it to get off the ground. So no strength. This is the strength of gravity is very low. It's like bouncing on the moon where this is like going to like Jupiter, you know? It's going to keep you grounded on the ground. So your elasticity is how high it's going to bounce on the first bounce. Your strength is its ability to get off the ground. And let's make sure we got a good, let's give it a little bit less strength here. All right, and now velocity, what is that going to change? Well, if we drop it, it's going to go quicker. <laughs> velocity looks like its ability to just rock it off the ground. I'm not sure if my, my words are going to do a good interpretation of what these effects are doing, but you can see visually as I adjust these, what happens. Now the squash is interesting because it's the first one of these that doesn't affect the overall length of this video action. If we put no squash, let's see what happens. So you can see that when it comes down and hits, right, boom, right there, it doesn't distort the image at all. It doesn't have any, you know, when you drop a tennis ball from really high, when it hits the ground, it's going to squash a little bit, just inertia physics, you know. This isn't happening without any squash. So now if we up the squash value, it doesn't change the length because it's not changing how easy it is for it to move, but watch what happens when it hits the ground now. Woo! That's a little bit aggressive. 
we'd probably want to tone that down a little bit. That looks a little bit more normal with the amount of movement that it's doing. So there you go. That's the gravity video motion. It allows objects to bounce up and down. Now what's really fun is that we can also add a video action to this. Um, well, we're going to have to, first of all, let's, um, how are we going to do this? Let's go like this. Let's make this infinitesimally small so we can't see it. And let's nest these clips. Now what I can do is I can take this clip and put it over here and then add a normal video action to it and move it over here. Now while it goes through its little tiny animation, it's going to be bouncing across the screen. So I have this, uh, let's make it a little bit shorter or a little bit longer. So it looks like it goes to eight seconds. That's right, I forgot. There you go. Now it's going to bounce all the way across and come to a stop. Um, and what that means is that I was able to nest the clips. And when you nest clips, you can then put effects on top of a whole group of clips. And that's how I had not only the, the bouncing, but also the sideways movement of it. So if I go back into this nested clip, I still have just that gravity bouncing up and down. But in my main timeline, the gravity bounces up and down and moves sideways. All right, let's get back to the other two options that we have. Let's get rid of our gravity. Oop, there goes gravity. Oh, thank you. Um, and we're going to add a video motion action here. And once again, we're going to make it about eight seconds long, or six seconds long, excuse me, more or less. And this time, we're going to change it to spring. So this is just a different type of animation. If we just go with the um, normal defaults, nothing happens. That's cool. OK. Mass, stiffness. OK. We're going to have to start this over because I'm having issues. Let's go back into the timeline, delete everything. Let's pull our candy corn back in. It's 10 seconds. We want to add a video motion to it. And we want to add a spring. What is going on? feel like a fool right now guys huh there we go sorry I figured it out there we go so <laughs> that was embarrassing. I haven't used this one for a while and I forgot how to do it. But spring, like you would probably imagine, is the opposite of gravity. So it's sideways. Um, we have damping. We have mass. Let's drop the mass way down. And let's try this again. What is going on? I cannot make this do what I want it to do. There we go. All right. Sorry about that. I'm back in it. So we get this kind of wobbly effect like this. So the damping, let's see how the damping changes it. If we come here and we adjust the damping, it's going to make it quicker. And if we lower the damping, so that looks like essentially the damping changes how thick the environment is that it's moving in. Imagine if you were in water as opposed to air. More damping means a thicker environment. So if we have none, it's going to 
easily go back and forth. And if we've got a ton, it's going to slow real fast. Now our mass, let's lower our mass and then raise our mass. So with a low mass, which makes sense, it's easier for it to stop. So it's going to stop really quickly if we have like barely any mass. If we give it a little bit more, it's going to stop a little quicker. If we give it a ton of mass, it's going to take a while for it to stop because it's heavy. It's got a lot of momentum behind it. Now our last one, our stiffness. Let's drop the stiffness way down. Oh, that was boring. Let's pull it way back up. So the stiffness is, I guess the way that I would think about it is think you have a big long stick. And if it's really stiff and you move it back and forth, it's not going to get any of this going on, you know? So if we have a really stiff stick, well, that actually is the opposite of what I was saying. So low stiffness means less movement. High stiffness means more movement. And you can adjust this to its position, its rotation, and scale. This is all depending on what you have changed in your original parameters. So if we go here and put this in the middle, and here put this in the middle, but change its scale and its position, now we want to do scale and position and now it's going to change based on that. So depending on the audio or the the actual effects that you added to this image, then your spring motion is going to affect that. Now if we take both of these off, it's only going to be that basic change that I made. And if we add rotation, nothing's going to happen because we don't have a rotation built into this, but if I want to, I can flip it over and now we've got a nice rotation. And you're going to see it's going to go wherever 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 wherever. 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 wherever wherever. So you can adjust this spring action to its physical location, its size or its rotation. All right, last one, pulse. Let's see where we're at. Boom 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 boom, it's pulsing. You can change the pulse count. We want 17 pulses. That's going to take a lot longer. If we lower the frequency, it's going to take even longer. But if we higher the frequency, it's going to take way less. We're going to do 17 pulses in 3.34 seconds. Easy. The amplitude is how big those pulses are. Whoa, that's hard to even look at. This one I think is the most straightforward. It's pulsing. It's going like this. You can choose how many times it pulses, how fast it pulses, and how big those pulses are. And of course, once again, you can select scale, position, or rotation. Let's try rotation pulse. <laughs> Whoa, it gets crazy with the big amplitude there. That's too funny. So the basic tenets of these, there are built-in animations in ScreenFlow that allow you to do things that would usually take a lot longer if you did them manually. Uh oh. <coughs> Sorry, I had to sneeze. And because we've built them in to be a lot easier, you can get certain effects without a f with a fraction of the amount of work. Just remember when you add one of these video actions, you can add your video motion action and change the parameters. So maybe we want it up in the top left corner, and then at the end, we want it in the bottom right corner. And it's going to add and nothing until you add an effect to it. And now it's going to change. So add your original starting and ending location, size, and rotation. And then choose your effect to add an extra effect to it. That's what a video motion is. So today we talked about audio effects, audio filters, the things that you can do over here in this audio area. And we talked about video motions. Uh, which, as you can see, can get tricky. They sometimes trick me out too, but they are very powerful and I recommend spending some time with them um, because it will allow you to really kind of up the game of any sort of animations that you do inside of ScreenFlow. So,
Before I give my parting thoughts, I just want to say, guys, if you have any questions, go ahead, fire them off in the comments, either on Facebook or uh, YouTube, and I'm going to check them now. We need to make it f easier to find the stream. Yeah, that's, you know, the eternal struggle. We're constantly trying to do that. But if you want to find it, facebook.com slash screenflow. That's where you can find it. Or YouTube. What is our YouTube channel? Let's see. Uh, I know we, we've been doing some changes lately. Screenflow Tube. Yeah, if you search for Screenflow Tube, you can find that. Um, we should be able to... It looks like some people's feedback is that uh, the ScreenFlow YouTube channel has a little bit better quality. We're sending the same feed out to either of them, but it is a little bit better quality on the YouTube channel. Uh, just to let you guys know, I'm going to be hosting a ScreenFlow Basics webinar, which is kind of like this, but we're going to... We're going to start from the very beginning, the first time you open ScreenFlow, all the way to the export and publishing and sharing of your first video. Uh, that's going to be on June 15th and 11 a.m. And uh, hopefully you've gotten an email about that. But uh, you can find it on our website. You can sign up for it there. We always record those webinars as well, so you can watch them at a later date. Um, but yeah, you can find us on social media. Sub to our YouTube channel. Get us on Twitter, uh, at ScreenFlow, our Facebook page, which you just saw up there. And then, of course, come to our next webinar where we can have a lot of people checking things out. So I don't see any comments here, and I don't see any comments here either. So I think we're going to call it a day here. Thank you so much for coming. Sorry Abdul wasn't able to be here. Uh, we haven't quite set up the schedule for the next coming ScreenFlow live show. So if you guys have any uh, thoughts on what you want to see in the next couple uh, first Wednesdays for ScreenFlow Live. Let us know. We'd love your feedback. And uh, if not, we'll come up with some cool stuff to talk about. So thanks, everyone, for coming today. I will see you all next month. And hopefully Abdul will be back for that one too. So, All right, everyone. I will see you in a month. Have a wonderful day.